So, Jaden, please take that chair down beside you. Shayla, please take the chair down behind you. Shamim, please take the chair down behind you. I hate chairs in the air. It makes me feel unwanted. Well, there's 30 kids in the class. There should be 30 chairs down. Should there not? And if those chairs aren't down, that means somebody's not here. I don't think it's like a personal attack for you, though. But that's how I take it. You don't get to tell me how to take these things. I wouldn't tell you how to take these things. All right. Uh, you have already done polynomial multiplication. We are now going to reverse that. You probably did some factoring last year, but again, I don't know how far it would have gone, so I have to assume none of you have done any of it, even though the first few ones are uh, self-evident. Like, you'll know what to do even if you had never seen it before. Even if I wasn't teaching it to you, I would say, do this. You'd be like, what? Oh, I get it. But we start from there anyway. So, this right here is an expression. It is not an equation, even though it has the equal sign. Because it doesn't equal anything yet. Okay? So, what math is happening right there? Multiplication. Which means this 4 is a factor. Because a factor is anything involved in a multiplication expression. Now, some of you would say that this group right here consists of two factors, but it does not. Brackets mean this is our second factor. Now, the reason it is a factor and not something else is because if you know what x is, then how many terms are there inside those brackets? No, if you know what x is, then there's only one, yes? If I tell you x is 10, this multiplication expression is 4 times 5, yes? It is not x minus 5, it is 4 times 5, because x equals 10, right? So, no matter what happens he inside these brackets, as long as you do not know what x is, that whole thing is a factor. Everybody cool? And whenever we have factors, we multiply to get a product. So, let's get the product here. You already know what it is because we've already done this. It is 4x minus 20. This direction is called expansion. And, of course, we get that by doing 4 times x minus 4 times 5. Right? We all know that already. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We can move forward. Yeah? yeah? Okay. If we go this way, however, and we go from a product back to the factors, that process is called factoring. It does not have a real life application. It is done solely for math. You use factoring to tidy up the mathematical expressions that we use to explain real life. Does everybody understand me? Right? If you're going to put a rocket ship on Mars, there's a lot of math. That math gets complicated. Factoring makes that math doable. So that's why it exists. Its real life application is to apply to math. Okay? Okay. So in the second example, even though that is a binomial, and that is another binomial, 
How many factors do we have here? Two, because this group is going to multiply by this group, yes? We don't know what X is, so we cannot solve it. Everybody cool? We can do only one, of, one thing with it, and that is multiply it out. Now, if I multiply it out, you all know this. It's double distribution. You can do this in your sleep. It is x times x plus 2 times x. I lie. Yeah, yeah, 2 times x. And then the way I like to write it, plus 4 times x plus 4 times 2. And you get a final answer of x squared plus 6x plus 8, right? If you know what x is, you can do something with that or that. But since we don't know what x is, the only thing we can do is this. We can either expand it out to a trinomial or factor it back to two binomials. Is everybody cool? All right, now, over here, I have factor 12. Now, in the radicals unit that we just finished, if I had said to factor 12, you all, of course, would have done something like this and told me it was 2 squared times 3, yeah? Right? Okay. In this unit, factoring 12 means finding integer pairs of factors. What do I mean by that? Six and two, three and four, and one and 12. That's what that means. One and 12, two and six, and three and four. Everybody cool? <coughs> All right, now, we are going to do this right now. So, in at least pairs, come up to the front of the room and grab one of these baggies. I have six bars, yes? Agreed? I can make a rectangle out of those six bars three ways, right? I could have... One by six, couldn't I? Yes. Right? I've also got three little blocks, yes? yes? Now, those three little blocks mess up no matter where I put them. I cannot make a rectangle if I use six and one, can I? So, that's out. So... My next option is, of course, two and three, yes? Does that make a rectangle? Indeed it does. How long is this? X, how long is this? X. How long is this? One. How long is this? One, one, one. X plus X. How many X's? Two X. No, we're adding. Plus one. Yeah? That is factor. What's the other factor? One plus one plus one. Three. Y'all, yeah? now in this unit, 
there is one question that I never, ever want to hear from you. That question is this. Mr. Myers, did I do it right? There is a reason I don't want to hear that question ever. Because if you did it right, you have factored, haven't you? Which means when you expand, you should get back to where you started, yes? What is 3 times 2x? 6x. What is 3 times 1? Positive 3. Is that that? So do you ever need to ask if you did it right? No. Clear? Excellent. Wyland. Excellent. Wyland. Nothing. All right. Attempt number two. Get out four of the big guys and six of the bars and make your rectangle. Go. Four plus five. What would that equal? Nine. Is that concrete? Yes. It is? No, of course it is not. Why? Because you cannot see that with your own eyes. What does that mean? It's a symbol that represents that many things, yes? But there's only one symbol for it. What's that? Symbol that represents this many things. When you put them together, you have this many things. But we use that single symbol to represent that many things. Is everybody with me? In math, we generally work symbolically. We don't work concretely because the numbers are too big. Could we use algebra tiles to explain the distance to the sun? If we had 151 million of them, we could say one of those blocks was a kilometer. But is one of those blocks really a kilometer long? No, it really isn't. So even then we are being symbolic, yes? All right. So let us remember, often we can model symbol stuff concretely. But sometimes we can't. But the principles work in both. Everybody with me? Yeah. So what we're going to do is keep your algebra tiles. We're going to use them again in a moment. So let's remember, symbolically, anytime we do symbolic math, that is just using numbers. It's what you're used to. This is symbolic. This is concrete. Everybody with me? All right. Turn the page over. We're going to do things a little weird today. Please note there is a number one here. This is the first kind of factoring you will learn. You already know how to do it. If you weren't taught it already before me, you already know how to do it because it's what we just did with the tiles. Okay? It's very, very simple. Normally, I don't teach you how to do stuff the way I'm about to teach you, but I find it works well for this. All right? It's a one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Four-step process. But again, you're going to do this automatically. You're not even going to have to think about the steps with these easy ones. But those steps are the same steps you're going to take when the numbers get bigger and more difficult. Okay? So step one. Uh, the greatest common factor. Uh, step one is decide on the GCF 
of all terms. Now, that means we have to include variables. All right, that's step one. Step two. Divide all, and again, I'm going to underline all, all the terms by the GCF. Step three, write your simplified answer. As such, this is what your answer will look like. GCF, whatever it was, bracket. What do you call the answer in a division problem? Quotient. Quotient 1 plus quotient 2 until you get up to the end of the quotients that you have. And I said it was a four-step process. Step four, check by expansion. So we are going to start with the easiest one we can possibly start with, similar to 6x plus 3. What is my GCF here? Five. Okay, step one done. Step two, divide all the terms by the GCF. Done. Step three, GCF first, five. First quotient, what's that? X plus quotient two, what's that? One. Done. Last step, check. 5 times x, 5x. 5 times 1, 5. We're right. Ease, peas, lemon, squeezy, yeah? Right? Okay. Next one we've already done concretely. If you don't need to write it out, don't write it out. What is it? You can tell me the answer to this. Two times three x plus one. Right. Which you would find when you checked. What about this one? What's our GCF? Right. It's not three x because there's no x there. So we divide everything by three. And we get for an answer, three. X squared plus minus two. Excellently done. And lastly, what is our GCF? Two X this time. Divide everything by two X. And I get two X. 2x plus 3, which I check like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, yes? The only thing that makes this slightly difficult are variables. 3x squared y cubed plus 15xy to the fifth. What's my GCF? Three X Y cubed. Done. Everybody cool? Okay. So let's do these four. What's that one? So our GCF is five X. 
So everything divides by 5x, and we write it out as 5x, then what? 5y, 3x, 7, done. Now, you're going to possibly come across teachers that are unhappy with the order that is written in. Okay, what's our GCF here? Two. So what's my answer going to look like? Right? All right. Now something weird is going to happen in C. So let's start with what you think the GCF is. 5CD. Does everyone agree? I mean, I can, I can see that all of them have Cs, and I can see that all of them have Ds. Right? See what I did there? I know, right? That was pretty funny. Yeah? Now, if we do this, we end up with 5CD minus what? Yeah? Now notice. What do you see there, there, and there? Negatives. Yes. We should remove all the common factors. Which means negative, negative, negative. We should remove this as a negative. Even though negative 5 is less than 5. And the type of factoring we're doing is called greatest common factor. Does everybody understand? We don't like this in math class. Just because. Now, sometimes we also don't like this term alone to be negative. And some math teachers will say, even if that was negative and these were both positive, they would still say, bring out a negative. Does everybody understand? I'll give you an example of what I mean. This question right here should really be written in a different order, shouldn't it? Because if we were going by degree, which I talked about for one minute and one minute only, like ages ago, this should be our first term, shouldn't it? Actually, I lied. This should. Right? Everybody with me? Okay. So if you are officially changing the order around, so it's written properly, and this is a negative... Most math folks will tell you to bring out the negative. Which will, of course, then change all the signs, yes? If I make this negative 5, what does this become? Positive and positive, positive. Is everybody with me? 
And that rule that you can change these signs by dividing by a negative is going to be very important as we go further forward. Okay? All right. What about this one? Nothing. Because one is the only factor. So if I were to divide by one, I'd write one times three X plus two Y. But we don't write one times anything. So this one is already done. Does not factor DNF. Okay? So easy, yes? Now listen to me and listen to me closely. Find yourself some blank space on your paper. Mackenzie, I work really hard on these books. I'm kidding, I don't. I make the book electronically and then I send it away. In this blank space, you're going to write a word. That word you should write in such a way that it grabs your attention. I am going to write it like this. always do this factoring if it is available to you. Always. It doesn't matter how complicated the question is. It doesn't matter if I'm going to ask you to do all four kinds of factoring that you are going to learn this year. You always do this one every chance you get. All right? Everybody cool? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And I'm going to ease you into factoring because factoring is very complex but very essential. So we're going to start with baby steps. You are going to do page 74 and 75. Right now, for homework. Well, not for homework, duh. For work. It says assignment, but it's not. Just do it. Okay? I am going to walk around the room and get your score out of 61. I think that's the only mark I need from you people. Yes? 